all. And new developments in the case against detainee Justin Menno as he continues his recovery at GMH. Half a day and good evening. We begin with a frightening moment for one teen up north. The Guam Police Department has launched an investigation into a possible home invasion along Chalangoro, Lena, and Jigo. The incident occurred just before noon today. KUM was on scene and could see Guam Police inspecting the house door as well as three females gathered in the garage. According to police spokesperson Officer AJ Balahaja, a 14-year-old girl was home alone and sleeping in her bedroom when she woke to her bedroom door being forced open. The unknown man stood at the entrance of her room before retreating. The girl then got up and locked the bedroom door. The girl described the suspect as local in his 30s or 40s, standing 5 feet 5 inches to 5 feet 6 inches tall with fair to medium complexion. Complexion. The man was wearing dark clothing and a black baseball cap. If you have any information on this case, you are urged to call Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-HELP. Well, Chris, with the concern over the rise in violent crime, senators have introduced a stand-your-ground provision that would amend current law to allow people to defend themselves anywhere they have a right to be without the fear of prosecution. Issa Baza has more. He's never been the victim of a home invasion. But Harmon resident Tyrone Phillips says it's definitely something he worries about. I've had uh, like, uh, you know, people just roaming around outside my house uh, like late at night. And, you know, there are times where I have to chase them off. But then, you know, it's kind of scary because... No, I have my family in the house with me. So. The safety of his wife and two children is his number one concern. I carry, like, you know, something in my car, something in my, my house. And, you know, I just, you know, I just hope that I'll never use it. But, you know, it's that, the thought that when, you know, when you're not at, at home, you know, you're just thinking in the back of your mind that, you know, anything can happen. Phillips says he supports a new stand-your-ground law. The measure was introduced by Senator Joe St. Augustine. It would expand existing Castle Doctrine law to allow people to use defensive force when threatened without first having to retreat. Also, the new law wouldn't only be applicable to your home, but also incidents that may happen in your yard or even in your car. St. Augustine says the law was introduced in response to concerns people raised over the need to protect themselves, even outside of their homes. When they happen to be walking in the park, they're being attacked by drunks. Former Senator Tony Addis says a stand your ground provision was part of the original law, but was taken out due to concerns from other lawmakers. They were thinking people would be vigilantes and, uh, you know, take uh, matters into their own, into their own hands. But when you look at Castle Doctrine three years later, you know, even though people had the opportunity to uh, protect themselves within their homes and use uh, uh, whatever force necessary in that manner, um, people have opted to call the police. Addis says he's excited the law has been reintroduced and is hopeful it will finally pass. Meanwhile, others in the community like Kelly Robago and Jack the Mungasaw have mixed reactions. I will support it because of everything that has been happening around our island. I believe we should defend ourselves. I mean, obviously there's good and bad things about it because people could, you know, with the bad people could always take advantage of it. It's bad to see anybody get hurt, but... You know, whenever your family and your friends are in danger, I'm, you know, I'm sure anyone could almost agree that they would want to protect their family. If it's going to happen in my place, in my house, then, you know, I got to do something to, you know, defend myself and my family. We should note the measure has been implemented in 28 other states. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Issa Baza. He's not well enough to go before the court. Dep Corps detainee Justin Menno has been in the Guam Memorial Hospital since he was badly beaten at the Post 6 Max Unit Yard area back in March. So when will he be ready to answer to the burglary charges against him? That answer we could soon find out after what happened in court today. Justin Menno may have been released from DOC custody, but his ongoing recovery from the day he was brutally beaten while being detained at DOC still leaves him confined to the Guam Memorial Hospital skilled nursing unit. He is not ready to be released. We don't need DOC there to watch him, but he's not ready to be released. Menno's burglary case has gone before the court for an arraignment at least a half dozen times in recent months, though it's been continued each time. He cannot talk. He knows who I am. He was able to... Sign a waiver for me, but 
Other than that, I didn't talk to him about the case. Attorney Anne Marie Gale is with the alternate public defender's office. She told the judge today about a pending motion to remove her as Meadows' attorney as she is representing a co-defendant, Dwayne Napatee, in his burglary case. The case is now set to go up for further proceedings Thursday morning. It's there Attorney Gale could waive Meadows' appearance and move forward with his arraignment. Since the beating, three people have been charged with nearly killing Meadows during the Max Unit attack back in March. Today, one of those suspects, Albert Santos II, pleaded not guilty to the attempted murder charges and will be back in court on on July 20th, the other suspect, Jeremiah Sazaki, has since pleaded not guilty as well. A third suspect, Peter Guinness, was also arrested for his alleged part in the attack, but has yet to be charged. And today, Judge Alberto Tolentino also setting a continued arraignment hearing for Meadow for July 19th. That hearing, he says, will only happen if the burglary case does not progress during tomorrow's further proceedings in Superior Court. Jury selection started this afternoon for longtime University of Guam psychology professor Dr. Michael Ellert. A total of 135 potential jurors were called to court today, though Ellert is charged for sexually assaulting three women during a Halloween house party in 2014. As many as five women could testify that he molested them in the past years. KUM just learned that trial will start tomorrow. Well, a man charged with attempted murder for a shooting in Agate last December pleaded not guilty in court today. Calvin Jesus Anderson was arrested late last year after witnesses say they saw him riding a bike before he allegedly pulled out a handgun and opened fire. One of the bullets hit a 19-year-old in the hip. Anderson then told authorities the witnesses only ratted him out because they don't like him. He is scheduled to return to court on July 18th at 2 p.m. What's the most pressing issues when it comes to public safety? That will vary depending on who you ask and where they live. The Coffee with a Cop program headed north today and what's become a popular initiative to make the Guam Police Department more accessible to the public. He's fallen victim to burglary many times, but when Jugo resident Tony Ariola called 911 for help, he says he was left waiting for hours for police to respond. Sometimes, you know, the half day, sometimes the you know, the next day. Ariola and his wife had the chance to voice these concerns to the Guam Police Department today at the Jigo McDonald's. It's called the Coffee with a Cop Initiative. Coffee free of charge, conversation with members of the force who for months have made rounds at each of the fast food chain's locations to get input from residents. So at least you know, I can present my problem with them. And uh, I hope, you know, they can really change. Ariola's concerns could be addressed soon thanks to newly introduced legislation that gives GPD property in Jigo, which they may use to build a police precinct. Chief of Police J.I. Cruz acknowledges they need to accommodate the village's growing population. Currently, Jigo is being serviced by the Dededo Precinct Command. With that uh, idea in mind, we're looking at an even quicker response time for calls for service up here in the Jigo area. Aside from slow response times, Chief Cruz says here are concerns about curfew. Cruz reminds residents that curfew law states minors cannot be out from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. from Sunday through Thursday without an adult. On Fridays and Saturdays, curfew law allows minors to be out until midnight. This, he says, is a seasonal issue because students are out for summer break. Should any of our residents see that, definitely contact the Guam Police Department, report it to us. Most especially if you suspect that they're involved in some type of criminal activity, whether it be graffiti is, is a, a lot of times what we see underage drinking, uh, you know, drinking under the age of 21. You see, we, we often see that. Uh, please report that to the Guam Police Department because those have a tendency to lead to other crimes which are usually more serious than just those statutory crimes. Another concern for northern residents is drug usage. Chief Cruz credits the public for reporting crimes and giving tips that have led to drug raids and arrests. We're getting a lot of good tips. We're getting a lot of good information about what's happening in the community. In an effort to stay ahead of crime throughout the island, Guam police announcing the start of Operation Peace, which means police enforcement against criminal elements. Authorities say it's a comprehensive patrol augmentation plan between the department's operations and investigations bureaus. The program will use resources from throughout the police force to augment patrol operations. It will also focus on areas community members point out, as well as receive calls for service. Like the name, the goal is to bring about peace to our island. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM.
There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM Radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. When we face an uncertain path. When we struggle with life's challenges. And when the unexpected happens. It's a beautiful day. We rely on the people we trust. Who we can always count on. And the ones who give us the most care throughout the years. Rely on Calvo's Select Care to give you the comfort and security you need it's a beautiful day. wherever you are. Calvo's Select Care, health care that's always there for you. More data on the ITV Family Share Plan. Get the amazing Samsung Galaxy S8 and an S7 for just $198 when you bundle your mobile plans on a share plan. Hyundai Summer Clearance Event is happening now. At Guam's best dealership, Cars Plus and Mighty. With financing as low as 1.99%. There's no better time to drive a new Hyundai Accent ranked highest in initial quality. Starting at just $11,995. Or the new Hyundai Elantra starting at $16,995. SUV lovers, check out the new Hyundai Tucson starting at $19,995. Plus, every new Hyundai gets Guam's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. It's our Hyundai Summer Clearance Event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Oh! 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 Ruby Tuesday puts the O oh in dinner combos with Garden Bar Plus entrees for only twenty ninety nine. Choose salmon moco, petite sirloin, or pesto chicken pasta. Only at Ruby Tuesday. Oh! The Down Syndrome Association of Guam exists to support families of individuals with Down syndrome. We're a group of parents who have children with Down syndrome and know the joys and challenges of raising them. For more information about the health, development, and education of a child or adult with Down syndrome, please contact Vicki Ariola at 472-6114. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. The stage is up, the rides are moving, the concessions are running, and bingo is on. The Liberation Day Carnival is underway at this hour, kicking off the festivities to the crowning of Santa Rita resident 18-year-old Queen Camilla Concepcion Monia, this year's 73rd Liberation Day Queen. Bingo will also be held on the Paseo grounds of the newly constructed air-conditioned facility. The carnival opened at 6 with fireworks to follow at 8 tonight and closing, closing for tonight at 10 p.m. The carnival will continue to run nightly Wednesdays through Sundays from 6 o'clock to 10 p.m. Parking will be restricted in the Chamorro Village area during this period. Port officials appeared Wednesday before the Legislative Transportation Committee for an informational hearing on a proposed bond to fund capital improvements. The port wants to borrow up to $80 million to repair and replace equipment and infrastructure. The projects include $17.5 million for a new admin building and commercial center, $14 million to match federal funds to fix Hotel Wharf, and another $8 million for a new gantry crane. Port General Manager Joanne Brown defends the spending. I found it appalling. After all those years of the generation of revenue that has been made at the port, including the heyday of the fishing industry, uh, that that money was not reinvested back into the physical infrastructure. And if you don't, these, these are facilities that require constant repair. We are in a deteriorating environment. So if we don't invest in that infrastructure, uh, we're going to have bigger problems down the road. 
interest on the bonds will be paid through Port Revenues. The Public Utilities Commission approved a five-year tariff increase for the port that went into effect last month. It calls for a 7% increase for the first two years, a 1% increase for the remaining three years. The proposed $80 million bond must still be approved by the legislature. The first official tax commission meeting of 2017 was held at the Department of Revenue and Taxation today. One major topic of discussion was the possibility of delinking taxes from the federal government. Oversight Chair Senator Joe Augustine raised the issue. If we do delink, what is the impact to the uh, Section 30 money? What is the, in the impact to the earned income credit? What will be the impact to how we're driving the real property tax? There's a lot of impact and that's where we have discussed this in the commission that uh, DRT will drive that train. St. Augustine adds stakeholders including DRT, the Department of Labor and the Chamber of Commerce will be working together to assess how delinking could impact the economy. These stakeholders are expected to report their findings by early September. Meanwhile, another option the Commission discussed is instead simplifying the existing tax code. Well, notice a strange color in the waters off Tumon Bay. Some call it the blood of San Vitoris. Others possible runoff. But according to the Guam Environmental Protection Agency spokesperson Nick Lee, the red or brownish tide seen along Tumon Bay is nothing more than plankton. Lee says inspectors investigated re reports of water discoloration in Tumon reported over the weekend. He assures the public though that the red tide is not the result of any runoff or an oil spill but is a natural occurrence that is not harmful to swimmers or the environment. TSA Guam wants to make clear it has not laid off any employees, nor does it anticipate doing so anytime soon. TSA Regional Public Affairs Manager Nico Melendez says while they have gained operational efficiencies with the new inline baggage screening system, no current positions were impacted. He says screening times were also not affected. Melendez says reductions in personnel are typically accomplished through attrition and voluntary transfers. Meanwhile, Melendez adds that should the proposed expansion of the Guam Airport Security Checkpoint push through, TSA would then evaluate whether additional personnel would be needed. Now to a report that will show you just how easy it can be to reduce your carbon footprint. In this week's Think Green, our Valerie Maige introduces you to a website that helps you track power usage in your home. Think Green, presented by GPA, bringing energy solutions to you. School's out, the kids are home, and the heat is scorching, so you may have noticed a small or large bump in your power bill. And in this instance, your best bet to manage utilities like power would be to see how you're actually using energy in your home. The Guam Power Authority is encouraging their customers to sign up with their MyEnergyGuam.com website to do just that. Customer Service Supervisor Elizabeth Mendiola says many customers get their bills and wonder why they pay as much as they do. They can only guess that maybe it's their air conditioning, water heater, or dryer. What this would do would be allow you to see if you've got um, central air system and you leave it on 24 hours a day, it will show you what the impact may be. If you've got split air systems or window units, it will also show you what the impact may be on a daily basis where the consumption goes up or down during the day. Maniola says the system is used to empower customers to track consumption and manage energy. The one gentleman that we had in the past had a problem where he was seeing a spike in his power bill and he couldn't understand. He says every night we do the same thing, we go to bed and in the end what had happened when you're seeing those different hours of the day, he was able to see that somehow in the middle of the night or when the kids went to the rooms and they thought that they were going to bed, instead they were using their PCs and, you know, computers. The system is relatively easy to sign up for. To register, go to MyEnergyGuam.com and have your most recent power bill handy. It will ask you to establish a username and password and it will follow with a series of security questions in case you lose your access in the future. It will send a confirmation email and then you'll be on your way to better tracking energy consumption in your home. For this week's Think Green, I'm Valerie Maige. Think Green, presented by GPA, bringing energy solutions to you. Well, Dave has the day in sports, but first, here's weather.
I say? My family was tired of seeing red from internet data caps. We switched to GTA and life is good again. Sure, it took a bit of time for some of us to adjust to our newfound internet freedom. Don't turn off the show. How does it end? Relax, honey. The data limits are gone. You can watch the whole show now. But we're all happy with the change, and I think it's even earned me some cool points. You rock, Mom. That's right. It's getting lit up in here. How about that? Okay. So I need to finish this homework now. Okay, I'm done. My son, though, he's in the midst of a serious rebellion. Rebelling against an alien invasion, that is. Ooh, yeah. Free yourself. Switch to GTA Home Internet today. Truly unlimited with no data caps or additional usage fees. My name is Koji Kichicho, and I'm a student at the University of Guam. UOG isn't what I thought it would be when I was growing up. When I was in high school, all I kept hearing was, you need to go off island. You can't do the things that you want to do here on Guam. There are no good opportunities here. I challenge those opinions. I am part of a generation that defies the idea that nothing big comes from a small island. My generation dreams and achieves. Many of the business leaders, public servants, teachers, nurses, artists, and thinkers that are now revitalizing our island came from UOG. Now, I'm looking forward to completing my homegrown education and going out into the professional world saying, I'm from the University of Guam. choosing the flute. Everyone's doing flute. Buick now has an SUV for that. Where's your brother? Ooh. Hey mom, it's a tuba. Get 0% financing for 72 months plus $12.50 purchase allowance on all Envision Preferred and Enclave leather models when you finance through GM Financial. Hurry, offer ends July 10th. If you like the iconic Chalupa from Taco Bell, you're gonna love this. Double the seasoned beef with nacho cheese sauce. The new limited edition double chalupa. Love it while it lasts. Only at Taco Bell. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching the FIBA U-17 Oceanic Championship held in Guam. Just in case you didn't know, eight countries being represented at the UOG Cowboy Fieldhouse and the FD Phoenix Center. Last night, our boys took on New Zealand while our girls faced Palau. Team Guam held their own against powerhouse country New Zealand in their second game of the tournament. After coming off a win over the Marshall Islands, the boys dug deep and kept the game close behind shooting from Tomas Calvo and Takumi Simon down the stretch. Calvo hit back-to-back -back shots to give Guam the lead for a short period. New Zealand would take that lead back off a tip-in by Thomas Higgins, who got position on the Guam defender. Takumi Simon ended the first half on fire, knocking down two three-pointers to give Guam the lead at the half, 43-42. to New Zealand turned it up in the third quarter, attacking the basket and getting Guam in foul trouble early. Max de Geest, corner three, off the mark, rebound and put back by Tayora Flavelle, rolls off the rim. Cruz Perot Hunt gets the put back for two of his eight points on the night. Jamar White showed up, White put up 13 points. Defender all in his grill goes window for the shot off glass. He also picked up three and a half steals. Manning up on his guy here. White backpedaling, bodying up the New Zealand player. Takes the ball away, drives down court, puts up the shot. Floater in the lane no good, but teammate Nathaniel Gayton got his back. For the putback, 16 points on the night for Gayton. Guam unable to hit shots late in the game while New Zealand continued to work the ball inside. New Zealand put away with under two minutes left in the game to lead 90-74. to They went on to win 90-78. to Takumi Simon led Guam with 20 points. 
On the girls' side, Team Guam played Palau in the late game. The ladies were on a mission after getting blown out by New Zealand in their tournament opener. The girls swarmed Palau with lockdown defense. Turnover after turnover resulted in points for the home team. Guam built a 24-2 first quarter lead, still here by Alicia Perez and won 14 points on the night for Perez. Mia Sinicholas led all scorers with 24 points, 18 rebounds. Kristen Sugiyama finished with 16 points, 19 rebounds for Palau. The girls are now 1-1 one one in pool play behind the 96-34 win. In other games, Samoa beat Tahiti 90-41. New Zealand won 10-31 over New Caledonia. Australia Big winners over the Marshall Islands, 166-3. The girls hit the court tonight at 7 p.m. at the UOG Cabo Fieldhouse to play New Caledonia for their third game of the tournament. Guam's Alana Salas playing big, going to the rack on three defenders. She finished the game with four points. In a press release sent by FIBA, three-on-three three will be added to the list of sporting events for the upcoming 2017 Pacific Mini Games to be held in Vanuatu. This coming after last month's announcement that the International Olympic Committee, also known as the IOC, will include three-on-three three as part of the Olympic basketball program starting 2020. This is great news for the basketball world as the Pacific Games Council received strong support from across the region. Guam has won bronze at the Youth Olympics for three-on-three, three, gold for the men's recent in the Oceania region, and New Zealand has been world champion in the sport. FIBA executive director in Oceania and Singapore, Mr. David Crocker, says three-on-three three requires only three people to form a team, and it requires only a half court to play on. In many villages throughout the Pacific, it is possible to hold three-on-three three games. From this village setting, the dream of representing your nation at the mini games, the world championships, and now the Olympic Games is possible. The Van 2017 mini games will take place from the 4th to the 15th of December this year in Port Villa, Vanuatu. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. It's Nissan Stay Fit Sales Event. Fitness is important. You Nissan service pros are like trainers for my car's fitness. Now check out this heart racing deal. Rogue starting at just one thirty-seven per pay period. The top safety pick Rogue, yours starting at one thirty-seven per pay period. And your new car fit kit includes free service, free car washes, and your own personal fitness watch. Keeping it fit and clean with free car washes leaves me more time to focus on keeping myself fit. The Stay Fit Sales Event. Find out more at Nissan Upper Tumon or online at NissanGuam.com. Get 50% off right now on all appliances at Dial Rent to Own. Need a range? Get one right now for 50% off. Want an electric or gas range stove? We have both. We have in stock refrigerators and freezers. Washers and dryers are 50% off too. We have only the best name brands at Dial Rent to Own. No matter what style you need, all appliances are 50% off. So why wait? Save at Dial Rent to Own. Reduce your energy costs with GPA's Energy Sense program. Energy Sense provides cash rebates with the purchase of qualified energy efficient air conditioners, washers, and dryers that help reduce your energy usage. Contact GPA today at 647 5787 8 or 9 to learn more about Energy Sense and other ways to help reduce your monthly energy usage and save money by using energy more efficiently. For more Energy Sense saving ideas, visit GuamPowerAuthority.com or like us on Facebook. Energy Sense makes good sense. Check out Triple J Spectacular July deals going on now during the hot summer savings event. With only 1.9% financing on all new vehicles, now is the time to buy. Plus, receive a free limited edition Liberation gift pack and $500 Kmart gift certificate with every purchase. Unbelievable deals on all remaining 2016s and all new 2017 models. That's right, 1.9% financing on all Hondas, Acuras, Fords, Lincolns, Volvos, Mazdas, and Kias. Get pre-approved instantly at www.triplejquam.com. Triple J says yes. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. See dealers for details. Triple J. Customers first. Happy Liberation Day, Guam, from Autospot Buick GMC.
And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Code Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Tasha Sangil, happy, have a blessed birthday. Love your familia. Happy birthday, Abigail Sangil. Many blessings to Abby G. Love you always, your familia. Jerry Tamagan from Tierra Kitagua and your kitties. Happy birthday going out to you. Happy 23rd birthday, Michaela Moore. And also happy birthday to Janine Cordero. Happy birthday, Mom, Mom, Jean. Love Carita, Micah, and the entire family. We love you. And Lori and Brenton Castro coming from the husband Juanito and children Annie Norman and Juanito Jr. Happy birthday to KUM's own, Len Ramirez. Lenny from Master Control. What's in your face, Len? And happy birthday to... <laughs> Abriana Lorelai Cruz. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birthday. Yeah, that's going to do it for us here on the news desk. Stay tuned. Extras next. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion.